Who doesn't like dinosaurs? Raise your hand if you don't like them. What? There's one in the back. That's why you're in the back. Anyway, they are fun. They make all of us kids. You know, everybody that's as old as me, I'm 61 today, and I still act like I'm 12 when I see dinosaurs. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful God brought me through everything. I'm still, I'm still here. So, but we're all 10-year-olds when it comes to dinosaurs. So it doesn't matter how old you really are, we're all become like 10-year-olds. So we're going to learn a little bit about dinosaurs. And this is uh, the book that I wrote. This is kind of a, a little bit lower level than my other dinosaur talk. So some of you that you know, think my last talk was a little sciencey, and it was. This won't be quite so sciencey, but it'll be fun. So let's move right along, and we'll talk about, if I turn this on, dinosaurs. And a lot of people have questions about dinosaurs. This is a picture of my self years ago and my daughter who's now 30 going on 31 she's the one that nursed me back to health literally because she's a nurse but uh, I laid on her couch for last month for about a week but uh, we cut out the best part of this the gasoline price above the diesel price wasn't much different <laughs> and so that's the biggest question is are we going to see those kinds of prices again and I think no but are dinosaurs in the bible and people wonder about that. Why don't we see the word dinosaur in the Bible? And did dinosaurs fit on the ark? People think dinosaurs were killed in the flood maybe and didn't get on the ark. But we'll, we'll take a look at that as well. And didn't dinosaurs live before humans? That's what we're taught. That's evolutionary theory. And even a lot of Christians get that idea that dinosaurs lived before humans, before God created humans. And, and we're going to see that these are easily answered if we look at the Bible. Easily answered if we look at the rocks as we go through them. So we're going to try to answer these. But first, we're going to start with what is a dinosaur? And uh, yesterday, we were mentioning these in our tours. Uh, dinosaurs walk erect. So you look at this guy right here, and the legs come straight down from the body. There's holes in the hip sockets, and we see the same thing over there. They come straight down from the body. So dinosaurs didn't drag their bellies. Dinosaurs walked. They were very leggy animals. They had a lot of long legs, and so they... We only find footprints of dinosaurs closely spaced together, which verifies that they really did walk this way. And the guy that recognized this, you know, modern reptiles today all sprawl. Their legs come out to the side and come down. So if it does this, it's not a dinosaur. Dinosaurs, whether they're two-legged or four-legged, they had to walk with their legs coming straight down. So we'll see that a lot of the specimens you might have saw yesterday in the other room, the triceratops, huge ribs came way down but the legs came down farther. So God designed these animals to kind of balance on the hips, like that Albertosaurus over there, which is kind of a small T-Rex. Notice everything balances on the hips. The tail, the head, perfectly designed. Even the head has holes in it to lighten the skull. So God designed these things so they wouldn't have too heavy a skull. Just wonderful design. This is the guy that came up with the name dinosaur. He did this in 1841, Sir Richard Owen, and he was the world's expert on anatomy. He saw more animals at that point in probably at, in the middle of the 19th century than anybody. He took over kind of for George Cuvier, the French anatomist, but he was the next guy to kind of carry the torch of the world's renowned anatomist. And he did this, of course, 230 years after the Bible was translated into English. So in our English Bible, like the King James Bible, there's no mention of the word dinosaur because it didn't exist until 230 years later. So that's why you don't find dinosaur in your English Bible. I'm not sure in the Russian Bible if you guys have dinosaur in there either, so you follow the English. So a dinosaur came along, this guy, again, look how happy he looks. That's how some of you are looking right now. Although you have more color. Anyway. They didn't smile much in those old pictures, as you know. Bra they weren't happy back then. Brachiosaurus. This is in the Field Museum in Chicago. Outside, if you go to Chicago and you go to the Field Museum, it's always cloudy in the Midwest. Anybody from the Midwest? You know how cloudy it always is? Clouds. And uh, there you have it. Big animal legs come straight down from the body. This is a dinosaur. Here's Seismosaurus. Well, really, this is a picture of my daughter. See her right there? The seismosaurus is just for backdrop. But this was a replica of a 131-foot-long dinosaur. They never found the whole thing in New Mexico. They found part of it. 
And then they said, well, if you had the whole thing out of plastic, you know, and make the whole thing, how big would it be? And so it ended up with 131 feet long, and the tail goes all the way to there. So again, legs come straight down. They don't sprawl. Here's your quiz. This is not a dinosaur. How do we know? Because the legs sprawl out to the side and come down. This is a Dimetrodon. And in fact, I just got word from the guys in the back over here, if you want to go to this talk at Castle Rock, Washington, on November 13th, there's going to be a creationist speaker talking about what he's found in Dimetrodon, November 13th. So again, the, the Mount St. Helens booth back here, if you're interested, this is my plug I promised him I would do. He had to pay me money. <laughs> no, he didn't. But anyway, it's actually interesting because he's going to actually show what I think is probably some original soft tissues in Dimetrodon. And these are found in rocks below the dinosaurs even. So these were buried before the dinosaurs or the waves came in. And so, but they're not a dinosaur because their legs don't come down. We talked about this yesterday, the specimen back here in the back. Pterodons and pterodactyls, whatever you want to call them, flying reptiles. They are not dinosaurs either. They don't fit the definition of how Sir Richard Owen defined them. So if it flew or if it had feathers like this, this is a bird. There's a specimen, different specimen back in the back. This one you can go see in Thermopolis, Wyoming. This is the actual specimen. I flew all the way to England to see the London specimen in the Natural History Museum and all they have is a replica. The real one's hidden away in the back room. You can't see it. So I'm like, oh. So you go to Thermopolis, Wyoming, dig some dinosaurs, and go to the museum. You can see this particular one. This is the only real Archaeopteryx in the Western Hemisphere that you can go see. But it's all from Bavaria. But this is a bird. Birds are not dinosaurs. We talked about that yesterday. Archaeopteryx, not a dinosaur. So it's a bird. Swimming reptiles, again, picture of my daughter for scale. She was a little younger here. We use our kids for scale in geology. <laughs> That's why we have them, so we can see how big the rocks are. But, but, I, but I don't remember how young she was, so I don't remember. I think she was seven or eight. But here we are in Kansas. This was a mosasaur deposited in Kansas. They got washed all the way into Kansas from the ocean. But this is not a dinosaur either because it doesn't have legs to walk erect. So now that you know what a dinosaur is and isn't, you're ahead of the game. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says this. Dinosaurs were created on day six. Like all land animals, God made the beast of the earth according to its kind. So I think the dinosaurs are including the beast of the earth. Again, it doesn't say dinosaur. Why? Because the word dinosaur wasn't invented really or came up with or coined until 200 years after it was translated. So God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, implying no evolution. And that's what we see in the rocks. What does the Bible say again? Dinosaurs are created to eat plants. This thing ate plants. It could survive and grow and do everything it needed to do just by eating plants. Now we know after Adam and Eve sinned, they started eating each other. And they started eating each other. You know, they, they would attack. But it wasn't until after Adam and Eve sinned because the Bible tells us this. Also to every beast of the earth I have given every green herb for food. So plants were not considered death. They were the food for the animals. There was no death until after Adam and Eve sinned. Then these dinosaurs started eating each other. We do have evidence of the bites and the teeth embedded in the bones, that sort of thing. So you wonder, how could this thing eat plants? This is the bigger version the adult version of this juvenile T-Rex, that's Sue in Chicago, found by Sue Hendrickson. And so you wonder, what did they eat? And unfortunately, some of the plants that were in the pre-flood world are extinct today, so we don't know exactly what they ate, but they did eat plants because the Bible tells us that. And the Bible is true. We'll see you later. Sharp teeth. If you found these animals... The fruit bat found its skull in the rock record, or if you found a panda in the rock record, you would think they eat meat. But neither of these animals eat any meat, to my knowledge. They just they sharp teeth. Sharp teeth doesn't necessarily mean they eat meat. So paleontologists look at the teeth and they go, oh, this eats meat. But it may be like a bear where it ate a little everything. We don't know. We can't tell behavior from the bones. That's the point. So here we have, I think, an example of the dinosaur in the Bible called Behemoth, 
which I think in some of your Russian translations might say hippopotamus, but it wasn't anything like a hippopotamus because hippopotamuses or hippopotami do not have a tail like a cedar. So we'll read through the Bible what it says about behemoth. And they just left this. This is kind of the Hebrew word. They didn't know how to translate it, so they just left it. But it should say, behold now sauropod, but they didn't know what that was yet. So they said, behold now behemoth, which I made with you. He eats grass like an ox. He strengthens his loins, force is the muscles of his belly. We'll look at some of these features. He moves the tail like a cedar. His bones are like bars of iron. So here's the whole tail like a cedar thing, which eliminates elephants and hippopotami because their tails are just little flaps. They don't do a whole lot, nothing like a cedar. And so it's difficult to explain something that has a tail like a cedar unless you think about these big long-necked dinosaurs. And now one other thing I want to point out before I move on is he eats grass like an ox. So here, God's telling us some of the behavior of this animal. And they found out in 2005 in the dinosaur dung in India, near some of these big long-necked dinosaurs, they actually found in the dung five species of grass. So these animals, these long-necked dinosaurs, the sauropods we call them, they really did eat grass. Secular scientists scoffed at that because they don't find any fossil grass. And they thought the grass didn't evolve until after the dinosaurs were dead. But when you look at the dung, just like when you see horse dung, you can see what it ate. And the fossilized dung told them there was grass. Even though there's no fossils of grass other than in the dung, they know there's at least five species of grass that existed. And these animals ate grass. The Bible told us this. Why do we doubt the Bible? The Bible is always true. Sometimes we don't understand it. Sometimes the discoveries are still in the future, like in this case. But now we know God's word is true. We see his strength is in his hips. And you look, look at these animals, and their tremendous strength in these big, huge bones in their hips. Power is in his stomach muscles. God designed these animals to have huge gizzards. And we can find these polished gizzard stones with the bones of these dinosaurs. Where if they were experiencing a little indigestion, they would swallow some rocks. And they would go to their gizzard. And then occasionally, this is a piece of dinosaur dung, they would, for lack of a better word, poop out one of their stones. Can you say that in a church? Poop out a... <laughs> First time ever, probably. I'm sorry, Pastor. It was Alexi. I'm probably going to get thrown off the stage any minute. But anyway, Job 40, 16 says, the powers of the stomach muscles. He had tremendous gizzards and stomach muscles to grind up this food. I actually found quite a few of these gizzard stones out in Wyoming in the rock layers that contain these sauropods. He moves his tail like a cedar. Again, here you look at a sauropod, which is a long necked dinosaur. You see a long neck, long tail. And in fact, God hollowed out the vertebrae of the tail and the vertebrae of the neck so they were much lighter. So they didn't have a heavy neck. They had a little bitty head. If you had a big head on that, it'd fall over. You know, kind of, uh. You guys watched the Seahawks the other night? If you lay on a couch and you have a heavy head, you just kind of lay there and can't get up. But I'm sorry they lost. I feel bad. And their quarterback. What do you do? All right, moves the tail like a cedar. See that big tail? When they walk, their tail would sway back and forth. They're finding that as they study the bone, the muscle structures on dinosaurs, that the tail really balanced everything out as they took a step. So each step would go this way, then that way. Same thing with these guys. Their tail was solid. You can see all these things, but it would swing back and forth with each step. And so the tails would often balance out their posture. And God designed them to do all those wonderful things. This is Bones are like beams of bronze. You look at his tail, or his, not his tail, but his feet, or his legs. Very, very strong bones in the legs. Here's one down in, I believe, Argentina. The paleontologist had dug one up. That's the thigh bone. That's this, you know, bone here, or this bone here. Look how much bigger it is compared to this little dinosaur. That's huge. That's those big sauropods. Look at, they do thin sections, and they see how solid the bone is packed in there. So they had hollow necks and tails, very solid beams of bronze, like the Bible says, literally, that held them up. So I believe behemoth is most likely a sauropod dinosaur with a group of dinosaurs that have long necks and long tails. 
And it seems to describe after the flood, God's pointing to Job, you know, look what I made. Look at this amazing creature. So some of the biggest creatures that ever walked the earth are these sauropods, like that seismosaurus. And the Bible also talks in Job 41 about an animal called Leviathan. You guys heard of that one? I think this might be a spinosaur. We'll look at, you know, I don't know for certain. Uh, It's hard to say. But this is one of the biggest spinosaurs they ever found in Morocco. It's about 50 feet long, bigger than the T-Rex. And there is an evolutionary scientist <laughs> who believes it can't see him. I would have ran. You don't get that close to him. It says in Job 41, who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible around him. And this thing you'll see is terrible teeth. His scales are his pride, shut up together with a closed seal. So God talks about the scales on these dinosaurs, very, very tough skin. Some of them had 40 layers of skin that would be almost like plywood back and forth with the collagen. So very, very tough skin on these things. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. And so very, very difficult to kill these animals. Uh, If you're a human, using arrows and spears and that sort of thing, I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his graceful proportions. Who can remove his outer coat? Again, talking about the skin. But he is very graceful. God designed these animals to be very, very graceful and move and and do their things. They're weighted perfectly, proportionally, and balancing about their feet and legs. Who can open the doors with his terrible teeth all around? So how many people have gone in the ocean and seen this coming after you? (laughs) So you'll be glad these things are extinct because those are some terrible teeth and they had a huge sail up their back as well. He leaves a shining wake behind him. One would think the deep had white hair. So I think Spinosaurus fits this bill because he had that big spines coming up its back. And most paleontologists, there's some, there's some evidence based on isotopes and things we don't need to get into that support that this animal spent a lot of time in water, more so than most dinosaurs. But it still had three-toed feet in the back. That's important. But I want to digress one more time, if you'll bear with me. And talk about these things. Those are fish called the coelacanth. And they're Karsai coelacanths. The guy that discovered this big dinosaur in Morocco gave a lecture in Dallas and I got to hear him. It was an ice storm that day, so only a few of us showed up. And he gave his lecture and he talked about these Karsai coelacanth fish. You guys familiar with the coelacanth? Coelacanth is a living fossil. It was supposed to go extinct. We only find its fossil in Cretaceous rocks, same time as dinosaurs, and deeper. And they they found them in the Indian Ocean in 1938, I believe it was, and they still find them today. They're still alive, but there's no fossil evidence. So they disappear in the fossils. They look like they're extinct, and yet they're still alive. That's what a living fossil is. But these fish today live in the ocean over 500 feet down. They live in the ocean over 500 feet down. But yet, because it's a dinosaur, they said, oh, these must have been freshwater fish because they're found with dinosaurs. That's the sake of the story. And I asked him after, I said, well, how do you know they're freshwater fish? They look exactly like the fossils, you know, the ones alive today that live deep in the ocean. And he's like, oh, because they're found with dinosaurs. So they interpret things however they want to interpret them. They should have said these are marine fish. How did marine fish get mixed with dinosaurs? Because today they live over 500 feet down. How do waves come in, bringing these fish in, mixing them with dinosaurs? How do we get sharks and things mixed with dinosaurs? If you didn't have big waves bringing them in. Lots and lots of marine fossils. The secular scientists have to say, oh, they must have been freshwater fish back then. Oh, they must have been freshwater sharks back then. And they just move on. But the real reality is you're mixing land animals with ocean animals, marine animals, not freshwater coelacanths. There's no freshwater coelacanth today. Well, the Bible continues in Job 41, says, on earth there is nothing like him, which is made without fear. He beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. So this is the biggest, what we call a theropod dinosaur ever discovered. So this fits the king over all the children of pride. This is 10 foot longer than a T-Rex and appears to be 
an animal that ate a lot of fish, at least, ate, ate meat anyway, after the fall. So I think a spinosaur seems to fit the Leviathan bill. And I put this in. My, wife's, my wife and I wrote a children's story out there about Henry the Hadrosaur. That's, we talked about that earlier. That's him there. And he meets this spinosaur on his journey, and the spinosaur says, oh, don't worry, I just eat fish. You know, he's got the big, long jaw that looks like it just ate fish. And even the secular scientists agree with that. They think it probably just ate fish. But it shouldn't have been eating coelacanths. So here's my one Russian word I know, da. I'm sorry, I'd like to learn more. It's a very pretty language. Dinosaurs were on Noah's Ark, da. Because they weren't excluded. There's no exclusion cause in the Bible. God said two of every kind. It says right here in Genesis 6, 20 and 21, creatures that moved along the ground, talking about the animals going into the ark, two of every kind and food. So the food that they brought on the ark were probably the plants. They didn't bring sides of beef to feed the T-Rexes. They would give them the plants that they were supposed to eat. And even today, crocodiles and alligators, they cut open and dissect and study. They find lots of vegetation in their stomachs. Even alligators and crocodiles still eat a lot of vegetation. But it says two of every kind. didn't say two of every kind except the dinosaurs, except behemoth. And then Genesis 7, 21 says, everything on land perished that had the breath of life. So all the animals that didn't get on the ark, which is most of the dinosaurs where these fossils come from, these are animals that weren't chosen by God to be on the ark. God brought two of this kind. God brought two of that kind. God brought two, well, it's kind of the same thing there. Two of the triceratops, two of every kind of dinosaur on the ark. No exclusions. Noah's ark was very, very big. This is the minimum size based on the cubit, which is like your finger to your elbow, I believe. Mine would be smaller than most of you. Some of you tall basketball players, you know, it'd be this big. The ark would have been 600 feet long. But, you know, 450 or 500 feet long is kind of the estimate. 75, maybe 100 foot wide, 45 foot high, three levels. Plenty of room on the ark. Plenty of room on the ark. It's probably only half full. You have to bring two of every kind. You don't bring every cat. You just bring the cat kind. You don't need every dog, just the dog kind. And so kind of more like the family level and the species. And in our ark down, we have a little part of an ark at our Discovery Center down in Dallas, and you can see two velociraptors down there, two of each kind, two of these things, two of the raptors. And this one actually moves and makes noise and we don't know what it sounded like, but we make, we make it sound like the movies. That's what people believe. But, you know, they're on the ark. We show animals on the ark, not dinosaurs. We show a few others as well. And then uh, my colleague Jeff Tompkins at ICR and I, about six, seven years ago, decided to do the math. Who likes to do the math? See, we want to know. Most of you didn't raise your hand. It's the public school math system. It's, but the average size of a dinosaur we determined by studying 350 dinosaurs. There was a new database of dinosaurs that came out, a new database. And we weeded down, the, took the birds out, got it down to 350 dinosaurs, and we did the average size. It was about the size of an American bison or a buffalo. But that's the adult size. On the ark, God might have brought on younger dinosaurs. So instead of bringing a 131-foot-long seismosaurus, he would have brought on a 12-foot juvenile, something smaller like that, or a, couple, a pair of those. So there was probably a lot more room on the ark than people think. And there's really only about 60 different kinds of dinosaurs. You know, there's the Velociraptor kind, there's the T-Rex kind, there's the Triceratops kind. Lots of variety. God loves variety. Look around the room. Most of you look different than the person next to you. Even if you're, you're the you know, direct family member, you still look a little different. Skull shape's a little different. So if we all got our skulls measured in here, I'll bet three of us would be a different species. <laughs> I'm probably one of them. They'd say, you're an alien, Clary? I'm like, no, no, no. 
But that's what they do is they find bones a little different. They name it a new species, but really there's not much difference in most of them. There's only about, so you need 120 dinosaurs on the ark. You know, maybe you say there's 70 or 80 kinds. Well, they need 160 on the ark. And if they're not that big, it's not going to really hurt. It doesn't take up much room. Ceratopsians, these are the kids' toys, because this is more of a kid's talk. But there's lots of these, but they all have the same basic body structure. They just have different numbers of horns. Some have one, two, three. But when they're born, they pretty much all look the same. So this might have been all one or two kinds. You look at the ankylosaurs. Who doesn't like a good ankylosaur? Okay, this is what Fred Flintstone used to eat. There's up the brontosaurus. Anyway, the Flintstones, by the way, I don't know if the translator is going to get this, Flintstones are probably one of the most accurate cartoons out there because they show dinosaurs living with humans after the flood. But the translator is going to get the, no, the Flintstones cartoon? Probably not. I'm sorry. Okay. But ankylosaurs, this used to be one of my favorites. They have all those bones sticking down their skin and they're well protected, but lots of variety, probably only one or two kinds. Same thing with large carnivorous dinosaurs. These are the theropods, which these two fall, well, that one too. But these all fall into the so-called meat eaters after the fall. There's only a couple basic kinds of those. So you wouldn't need that many dinosaurs. Duck-billed dinosaurs, same thing. If you took the tours yesterday, we saw a duck-billed dinosaur leg and the skull. They look like they have duck bills. There's only a couple of kinds of these as well. So you wouldn't need to take that many. Remember, the flood lasted about a year, and so dinosaurs had a lot of time to lay eggs, and we do find dinosaur eggs, dinosaur footprints. They were running around trying to find the land as the waves were coming in. They were trying to stay above the water levels as the waves came in, and so I think dinosaurs might have survived about 90 to 100 days into the flood. Maybe not quite that long, but remember, the land doesn't seem to be flooding until day 40 when the ark starts to float. And so as the water got higher and higher, the dinosaurs kind of moved, but eventually they got caught. They couldn't get away. There's, in Montana alone, there's 10,000 of the same dinosaur kind, all buried in a one mile by three mile area. 10,000 of the same thing. Had to be a massive catastrophe to bury all those dinosaurs, all their adult dinosaurs, buried all at once in the same area. The flood fits the bill. So they left behind nests and eggs and footprints, etc. Dinosaurs normally laid eggs. This is the theropod eggs. They laid two at a time in a circle. These are the duck-billed dinosaur eggs. They lay about 20 or 30 eggs. And we can still find some of these nests of eggs where the dinosaurs laid them because they were pregnant, had to get rid of their eggs, and then the waves came in and buried them. Most of the eggs didn't hatch. A few did. Here's a CT scan of a couple of eggs that I had at my college in Michigan. This one looks like it has some bones in it, maybe. This one didn't. This is just fractures. So some, you know, a lot of the times the babies dissolved away as they were buried. Here's some babies. I got a chance to dig on some of these little babies in Montana. And little tiny bones from little hatchlings, ones that just came out of the eggs. Eggs were all pretty small. You know, these duck-billed eggs are only this big. So there's one in that other room if you went on the tour. So they had to lay their eggs. They had plenty of time. Again, the flood didn't reach its highest point till day 150. It was a slow, painful judgment for the people that didn't get on the ark. And unfortunately, these animals, most animals, you know, only two of every kind got on. So every other animal was also killed by day 150 that breathed air. So the dinosaurs probably ran around in the waves coming in they left a lot of footprints. Sometimes their footprints even scratched where you can see they're almost floating. In Australia, there are some examples where there's footprints that are coming along and all of a sudden they're just a couple tips and then they washed away. You can see the waves came in. Even the secular scientists say there must have been a big wave of water that came in and washed them away. But yet they don't want to believe in a flood. But they see the evidence. You can find footprints down by Texas and Glen Rose. These are Acrocanthosaurus, which looked a lot like that Albertosaurus, but bigger, kind of like a T-Rex. Here's my daughter again for scale. She's older. Here's a big imprint of a big sauropod, the behemoth, with the long necks that pushed the mud down as they stepped. That was freshly deposited flood mud. They were still trying to walk through it, and they squished down the mud that far down. 
Dinosaur Ridge in Colorado, if you ever get there outside of Denver, people were stealing the footprints here. They're cutting them out. And you can see the animals walking on this way and a juvenile, and you can see different species all trying to find that last little bit of land. Even if there's a little bit of water, there was still drier there than somewhere else. It was shallower. So a lot of times we see dinosaurs walking around in the same areas, different species, because they're trying to stay on the last little bit of land before the next wave came in and washed them all away. So the truth about dinosaurs, of course, is they were buried rapidly like all fossils. We talked about that last time. And unfortunately, if they weren't on the ark, they also died in the flood. We see the evidence of very quick burial like this, fish eating fish. It's a different picture than I showed you in my earlier talk. There's lots of examples of these fish eating fish. And sometimes these secular scientists get kind of bold and off base and they say, well, it must have choked and died and fell to the bottom. They did this with a squid in a fish most recently. I'm like, no, it's, they were just buried fast in the process of eating other fish. Here's a live birth of ichthyosaur. See this? Here's the mother. There's the baby coming out. Swimming reptile. Not a dinosaur. Look like a porpoise. If we saw one over here. We have a replica of one in the other room. But this one, you can see the baby come around. There's, another, there's other vertebrae in here from the other babies still inside where they got squished so rapidly that you preserve that birth. And this is my favorite, found by apparently a Polish expedition in the 1970s in Mongolia. That's when the Cold War was going on, and we couldn't get into Mongolia as a U.S. scientist until the 90s, but they found this specimen, the fighting dinosaurs. This is a velociraptor right here, about the size of that, and it's in fighting with a protoceratops, which is a type of animal like a triceratops without horns. And so they're going, and the mouth of the protoceratops has the arm of the velociraptor right in its mouth. And it's about to bite down, and they're buried instantly. 4,400 years later, they dug it up. And they're still in that position. So this is like those WWE wrestlers you guys watch. And they got them in the arm hold, and they're about to take them down, and they get buried instantly. And they're stuck like that for thousands of years. And that's an amazing, this most, one of the most amazing fossils ever discovered, because it shows what they call a life assemblage. You know, this is actual behavior you can tell from the fossils. These two are in mortal combat. Now, even though this was a plant eater, it had a strong bite. So like a trapped rat, all it could do was bite back. And so it was trying to bite back. It probably would have snapped the arm in half of the Velociraptor, but it never got to finish the bite. That's pretty rapid. Nobody denies that. They just think, oh, it's a dune collapse. A sand dune got too wet, the dune collapsed. That's the standard secular story, but this is the flood. Those waves are coming in 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, burying things instantly. Dinosaurs are not millions of years old either. We talked about this earlier. What we find in the dinosaurs in the last 20 or so years, we find all these original tissues we talked about, that stretchy stuff, where Mary Schweitzer initially in 2005 dissolved the T-Rex thigh bone too much and found all the soft stuff, and she goes, what is this? And she found out these are original proteins. These are original collagens. And she was afraid to publish it because she knew she would be ridiculed. And a lot of people do ridicule her. She's not a creationist, not a young earth creationist anyway, because she went to college. She used to be, apparently, and then she became an old earth person. And whether she's a creationist or not, I don't know. College can ruin you if you're not prepared, if you don't have a good background, you don't have a good foundation. It'll make an evolutionist out of you. But that's what the fossils show again. Original proteins, over 115 papers now since 2005 have shown these original tissues. And, and again, ask your local physical chemist. You know, or I look up studies. How long can this last? How long does this last before it decays away? Even oil. It's not part of my talk, but I worked in oil and gas. They used to say the oil is 150 million years old in Wyoming just sitting there waiting for us to drill into. 150 million years old. Now, does that make sense? When oil biodegrades at the surface within months, when most oil we produce is partially biodegraded, 
showing that there's even bacteria underground eating the oil away. No oil can last even one million years. It's organic compounds too. So when you're going to your gas pump and you're putting in that gasoline, you know, they're trying to tell you that oil is 100 million years old or older. You know, it's nonsense. You wouldn't put that in your new car. Who will put 150 million year old oil gasoline in your car? Well, that's what they tell you it is. But organics cannot last that long. Even underground, there's always bacteria. As far as we've drilled, miles and miles now we've drilled. So if any of you know about that well they drilled in the Kola Peninsula, we need to talk. Because they drilled down thir- was it 13 kilometers, I think it was. Deepest well ever drilled in the Kola Peninsula. Some of you know where that is. No? Way up in the Great White North by just east of Scandinavia. Yes, the answer to your question earlier is yes, humans and dinosaurs did live at the same time before and after the flood. The dinosaurs lived after the flood for a while. He is first to the ways of God. Job 40, 19 says. And you can see here the size of what might have been a behemoth, a big, huge sauropod. There's a, there's a T-Rex and there's a human for scale. And then I think, again, Spinosaurus might have been a leviathan. His internet says like sharp, sharp pot sherds. He spreads pointed marks in the mire, in the mud. That's what we see. His three toes would have left three-toed footprints. So I don't believe it was a swimming reptile. I believe it was some sort of dinosaur like a Spinosaurus with that tail sail on the back would have made a big wake when it swam to the water. So in our Discovery Center down in Dallas on the wall, we have this painted on the side after the flood and this after the flood for the behemoth and Leviathan. And then we have a replica of this as well. This is one of the more outstanding evidences, I think, of dinosaurs and humans after the flood. And this is the Angkor Temple in Cambodia. There's some debate on the age of this, 11th or 12th century. But here we see an animal that has all these plates sticking up on its back. Now, maybe the head's too big, but the legs are coming straight down. Legs are coming straight down. That means dinosaur. And you get these plates sticking up on its back. So here we are only you know, 900 years ago or so. And the animals above and below this are monkeys, lions, water buffalo, real animals, still alive today. And then this is in the middle of it all. So, to me, this looks pretty much like a stegosaurus. So why no dinosaurs today? Kind of our last question we'll look at. You know, you see them in the movies. Well, I believe they slowly went extinct in the centuries after the flood. Part of it was climate change, maybe. But they lived long enough for Job, maybe three or four hundred years after the flood, when Job was alive, maybe, for God to point out to Job, Leviathan, and Behemoth, animals that got off the ark. And it's probably long-term climate change from the pre-flood world to the post-flood world. If dinosaurs are really cold-blooded like I believe they are, the evidence seems to support that, they would struggle when the weather was cooler. And right after the flood, there was an ice age that lasted for hundreds of years. It squeezed down where dinosaurs could live, just in the equatorial regions. And so many of them probably lost their habitat because they got too cold for a while. And then humans were probably killing some of these dinosaurs as well because after the flood, humans and dinosaurs had to live in the same spaces. So you hear about these knights killing dragons. Some of those might have been small dinosaurs they were killing off. But like a lot of animals, if their habitat changes over time, of course, they, you can't produce enough babies and eventually they go extinct. So don't believe the movies. Don't believe your college textbooks either for the most part. Popular media pushes evolution in millions of years. You see it on every TV show, every book you pull up, except for the books like we produce and a few other creation ministries produce. True science and the Bible do match. You know, the grass, seropods ate grass. Nobody believed that until they found the dung that proved it. But the Bible said it all along. Dinosaurs are part of God's plan. They were created on day six with all the land animals. That's why God says, look, I made along with you in the book of Job. He made dinosaurs on day six, just like he made cattle on day six. Birds are on day five. Plants on day three. 
Dinosaurs are part of God's plan. Okay, dinosaurs are only thousands of years old. The evidence stacks up. So we want to thank Dr. Joseph Kazell at Arizona Christian University. He actually checked my Russian translations from Google tr translations that Jake Hebert did. I want to thank Jake Hebert too while I was gone last week. But uh, if any of the Russian, there is a mistake, this is the guy we're blaming. Because <laughs> I, I only know da. And uh, in the back, there used to be this book, but it's sold out here. You can order online. If you go to icr.org, this is a, it's almost 200 pages of wonderful pictures of dinosaurs. talks about all the things I talked about in this lecture and more. goes through the more details on each type of dinosaur. And I've even seen three-year-old kids, even though it's kind of a high school, junior high book and up, the pictures are so good, even the three-year-olds are fascinated by it. But because of that, my wife and I said, let's write some books, and we did this, and then we have a follow-up book, which I think there was a couple of follow-up books still out there. Some books that don't talk about millions of years, where they give little science facts, they give little Bible facts, and they show that you know, the account of the flood and Noah it's not just a play toy with animals sticking out. It was a real huge barge that saved humanity and saved two of every kind. Unfortunately, the dinosaurs since then, of course, did go extinct, it appears. I don't think there's any alive today. And the video clips I showed in some of my talks come from this DVD series. I'm not sure if there's any of these left or not. I can't see any of the events, guys. But again, you can order all these at icr.org, and they'll even give you a piece of paper if they're sold out that'll give you a discount if you want to go online and get a discount. Who doesn't like a discount? See? And there's a, I don't know, I think we brought some of these too. These may be gone, more for like the elementary kids. And these are facts and things. It talks about soft tissues, does different things. Really, really good books. Christmas is coming around the corner, and I'm hearing that the toys from Asia aren't going to make it here due to COVID. We have these books right here in, in the States, so you can order them that way. And if you get down to Dallas, please, please, please come by and see us. And this is our Discovery Center. This is the artist's rendition, but it looks pretty much like that. There's a planetarium, and we have all these, you know, fairly good 30-some million dollar museum with a huge T-Rex that growls and roars, scares the kids, <laughs> distracts me from looking at Grand Canyon. We have some wonderful exhibits. Testimony from my wife. She goes, I thought this was going to be some tacky creation thing. And she walked through it. She goes, wow, this is outstanding. So if it impresses my wife, and I'm still trying, if it impresses my wife, it's worth seeing. So if you're in the Dallas area, you're passing through, anything going by, please stop in it. And you might even run to one of us. You can even say, can I see one of these crazy scientists like Clary? Well, the other ones aren't crazy. But if you want to see Clary, you know, if I'm in, I'll come by and, and you know, we can talk. So uh, you can ask for that too. We can't always do that. So I don't want to, I'm probably going to get in trouble with the boss now. So get back to your desk and get to work. But he's speaking next, so you can ask him. All right, thank you very much.